wonderful day it is today. Are you having a good day too? I hope you're having a good day too. Welcome to Lift Nibbles. Raw soul. That's John Luke. He's a miniature poodle. <laughs> so the topic I thought we would explore today is five times therapy fails and how to fix it. And don't get me wrong, therapy is exactly the right solution for many, many people. And if you're one of them, this video probably is going to be boring and not interesting for you. <laughs> But for people who have had at least three therapy sessions and left those sessions not feeling like it gave you what you wanted, if you've been to three or more appointments and you left confused or unsatisfied or unresolved, stay tuned. You may be interested in what this video contains. Some people just can't afford therapy. If this is you, I am sorry for the frustration of that. I don't believe that people should be shut out for lack of funds, especially in today's day and age. We need all the mental and emotional support we can get. And I believe everyone deserves support. So at the end of this video, I will show you how you can join me for Name Your Price group sessions. So you've been to three or more appointments. You went in hopeful. You maybe were really in need or had a trauma that you were trying to resolve, but it didn't turn out the way you hoped or wanted. Maybe you didn't know what to imagine. You just feel solidly that the therapy was not what you expected. Here are five ways, five times that therapy actually fails and what to do about that. Number one, if the therapy doesn't match your particular type dynamic, it may not work for you. In the same way, there are some people who are brunettes and some people who are blondes. We each have a very unique fingerprint of type dynamics. One type of type dynamics, you can look this up on Google, there's audio, visual, and kinesthetic learners. And so if you have a therapist who's speaking to you with one type and you are a different type, that therapy might not work for you. If you're very kinesthetic, if you prefer to experience things, if you learn by doing, then talk therapy may not be the right solution. In the world of healing, one size does not fit all. There are elemental types, fire, air, water, and earth. There are spiral dynamic V-memes of how we relate to the world and how we perceive information around us. There are Enneagram types. With all of these different type dynamics, if a particular therapist is not meeting you at your psychograph, at your type dynamic styles, then it may just not work. That doesn't mean that a different therapist might not work. It means that the best way to get the support you need that will work for you is to find someone who is trained and able to morph the conversation in a way that recognizes and meets your specific type dynamic. Number two, therapy that pathologizes instead of teaching core values sometimes just doesn't work. In the psychological community, there are a lot of assessment-based labels, ADHD, narcissists, people who overthink. These labels and assessments help us to start to look at where we want support. However, they focus on what we don't want rather than what we do want. But what we focus on, we attract more of. When we talk about what we don't want, we don't help the mind to integrate what we do want. What we want is to find our path of wholeness that leads to results. What we want to do in conversation is find out what you do want. Therapy that sees you as broken instead of tapping into your inner mastery keys might paradoxically hold you back. There was a study about teachers with students and when a teacher had particular preconceived notions about the students, the students wound up subconsciously living up to those 
preconceived notions, even when the teacher did not declare them out loud. The solution here is to be able to sort out problems. And I say that playfully because I offer a five-step process called SORT, S-O-R-T-T. But what I mean by that is that we want to be transmuting issues to the core values, the action steps, and the inner infinite aspect that can feed us toward living the way we want to be living. While history has separated science from spirituality, we've become divided from our intuition, from our inner guidance, from that higher aspect within us that is capable of infinite bliss, that's capable of infinite peace, that is capable of infinite solutions. So getting back in touch with that can provide tremendously powerful action steps rather than going for therapy that pathologizes. If therapy has not worked for you before, try going to a provider who offers core values based transmutation. Number three, much of the psychological field is based in talk therapy instead of cymatic brain repatterning, habit repatterning, or vibrational dynamics coaching. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, tapping, affirmations, they attempt to address our underlying body-mind. They attempt to address our consciousness. That's good. But we are multidimensional beings. We're not just mind and body. We are mind, body, and spirit. We need all three. Imagine trying to fix a vehicle when the alignment is out of whack but you've gone to a practitioner who's just doing oil changes. If you are a hammer, the whole world looks like nails, but that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes the right tool is a wrench. Sometimes you need multiple tools. You need to be able to go to a garage that has all of the tools available and the skills necessary to be able to assess which system or systems need support. And most importantly, When it comes to psychology, you need someone who deals with the system of the whole of who we are rather than just dealing with the symptoms. Number four, sometimes therapy doesn't work for some people because they find that they go into their therapy sessions rehearsing pains, reliving traumas instead of transmuting pain and transmuting trauma, especially if you've had complex PTSD. There's a cymatic, a biochemical aspect to healing CPTSD that talk therapy alone doesn't touch. When we relive an experience, when we tell the story about our complaints or we retell the story of our trauma, what we're actually doing is perpetuating the neurons in our brains, refiring in the same pattern rather than re-entraining our biochemistry and our vibrational dynamics. Imagine you want to find a different way to commute to work that's faster, but instead of trying something different, you take the same path again that you've taken every morning that you commuted to work for the last five years. Obviously, when you do the same things, you're going to get the same results. What we need to be doing in our healing work is changing the route. For things to change, the mind, body, spirit patterning needs to change. So the solution here is what I call filling the cup. If you're working on the past and you're healing a trauma, this is called rescripting. If you are trying to create a life that's more in line with your wishes, I call this rain dancing. When you're doing it for a pain in the moment, we call it filling the cup. But the technology is the same. By using the creative imagination, you can re- establish biochemical patterns in the brain, in the body, and in your vibrational dynamics. This is part of what entrains your body toward a different future. When we are looking for the core values and then re-entraining the body, mind, spirit system, this is what some people call transmutation. When we're finding those core values, and by the way, those core values are the bridge to your divine aspect. They're a bridge that indicates where to look for your divine purpose, your divine face, your aspect of the higher self. When we're looking at those core values and then we entrain with the vibrational dynamic and the vivid 
experiential sense of what it is we do want or would have liked, the ideal version of what we would have liked, this is incredibly healing. Both I and people I've worked with have been able to cure lifetime traumas in under 90 minutes. This is very different than therapy that tends to go on for months, sometimes years, without necessarily resolving the underlying trauma or pain. Number five, old school psychology treats the individual like a 3D material entity instead of recognizing our multidimensional selves. Imagine exercising just one arm of the body and not exercising the other arm, leaving the second arm weak. Eventually, that's going to be problematic. We want balance between both arms. We want balance on both sides of the body. Likewise, Society has taught us historically that we are limited, materialistic, consuming, broken, sinful, fallen from grace creatures. We aren't. Creation emerged out of the abyss as an opportunity to experience, to explore, to play. Society teaches us that we need a government outside of us to control us because we don't control ourselves. Instead of teaching us that the path to our highest satisfaction and bliss can be found from the keys within. In a historical environment where there was ransacking and pillaging and burning, it was helpful to have conformity. But modern society is not like that. We are currently in a tipping point. As we enter the age of Aquarius, we have the opportunity to experience the full capacity and the full potential of what we have as multidimensional beings. If you've been displeased with your therapy, possibly it's because you were not treated as an interdimensional being, but rather treated as an exercise of one arm without exercising the rest of the body. If you're not experiencing your infinite aspect, with your therapist, that may explain why you've left unsatisfied. To experience the way your infinite self can contribute to a felt sense of absolute safety, fulfillment, and satisfaction, be sure to subscribe to Lift Nibbles on YouTube and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for updates, or join me for a live session You'll find links in the description below. So I hope this gave you some clarity about why therapy may not have worked for you as well as you'd like and how to do something about it. Does something here resonate for you? Where has therapy not been what you wanted it to be? If something in this has inspired you, please leave your comments below. Or if you have a struggle you would like solved, leave that in the comments below. Thank you for listening.